So good morning, first of all, here's a little view of where I'm videoing today. I'm at East Coast Park in Singapore. Stunning day, it's super hot. Um, I think the pool might be calling me a little bit later for a splash workout again. Um, just in the distance there, oh, I just went, oh, just in the middle there, you can see the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. Pretty awesome view, hey? So, as I attempt to set my iPad up so you can see my space, I forgot to bring a towel, so I'm balancing on my weight vest. Um, yeah, I know, I was just so keen to come out. Here we go. Da, da, da. Can't not do the tiptoe. There's my ass. Good view, Lisa. Well done. All right, hands and knees. That's what we're going through today. Quadrupeds. So, first of all, the knees go underneath the hips, the hands underneath the shoulders. I'm just going to do a nice, simple cat stretch. So the tail comes under, the head goes down, back rounds off, looking for an even curve as a trainer to see any bits of the back that are sticky. And then you go the other way into the arch and then the curl and the lift up. My back is pretty flexible, so for me to come the other way right now, that's not my strong point. Um, my lumbar doesn't extend so much and that's what it is. Find the length in the middle and I'm just gonna work from my tail to my mid bit, to my middle back, to my lower ribs, to my chest, and the head comes down last. And then on the reverse, I'm gonna start with my butt. So the butt goes up, do my best not to move the rest of my body. And while I'm moving the rest of my body, the first bit I moved, which was my tail, continues to go. Cara Risa did this with numbers. So she would say your head is number one, your butt is number 10. So you're working through your numbers from 10 to one in this case. My 10 goes up, my 10 keeps moving as my 9 goes up, my 8, my 7, my 6. 4 is about the boobs, head, wee, number 1. Then I'm going to flip it, number 1 first. Head, shoulders, I had to fight so hard not to let my tail come under. Here we go, go on, number 6, get up there, number 6. And then I can let my number 10s go, and then on the reverse, 1 comes up, 2, 3, 4, 5, belly button is about 6, there I go, trying to not let my tail go and all the way through. It's a really cool way to get articulation through the spine. I jammed, backs get a wee bit jammed through life. So it's just a way to pay attention from different ways. If you look at the right hand side of the screen by the bin, that's, um, that's the rubbish I've collected on my walk so far. Lots of things I could tell you about quadruped, um, or all fours, which I'll go into a bit. Next part we're gonna look at is I have to set all myself in, sit forward, sit back, shake around. So I'm trying to get, my hands I think are a little bit too far forward actually. Or it could be my camera angle. Opposite arm and leg reach. So with this, you're looking at staying as still as you can through the body as you do it. So the leg stretches out and the arm, I tend to do my leg first. My leg's a little bit high there. I could have stretched my knee a bit more. So I don't want my hips to rock and roll. Next one, what you'll see as I do is my supporting foot is off the ground, which makes it a lot more wobbly. So I need to rotate, there I go, turn that knee in a bit. It's a bit more wobbly and your whole stability system through the shoulders of the hip have to work a little bit harder. Lift up through the belly, which I've gone through, I think in different videos, if you wanna check them out. Now you see how much more I wobble on my left side. My left leg is one that got affected, wee, by a slip disc uh, nearly five years ago now. So that's why that balance is still not always there. Now you get to see my butt and you'll see what the problem is and what often happens, so finding my length, the hip shifts. So we goes to the side as we try to balance. So what we're looking for is trying to keep the body in place, which means that that whole right hip area in this case has to hold tight. You know, I went for a barefoot walk down the beach, stunning, absolutely loved it. Hip can drop, hip can hike, so with the free hand, you can put that on your back to feel what's going on. There's a shift, I bring it back, and you kind of have to pull your body into the inside leg of the leg you're balancing on. That can often help. Hand on the back there again and really thinking, how am I setting my hip and the shoulder? I do the arm at the end, what's called the arm spiral, which will help you balance. Same side is a little harder. So what we tend to do is shift a little bit away from the two limbs that we're lifting, but again, not letting the pelvis rotate. It's... um. It's a very different way to balance. The inside thigh of that leg I'm balancing on my left side has to work a lot, lot more now to not let me shift even further. Ideally, my arm and my leg would come up at the same time, but I do find it easier to go leg first, then the arm, and even I can see I'm much better on that leg. Um, your legs, we're two-sided creatures, so 
both sides you're going to feel a difference um, we're dominant on one side so you know just notice it no point berating your body or ah yourself it's like ah and from there you can work on what you need to work on that one was a little bit better for me with the the timing of my arm and leg and here I go I'm going to try it again to do the same um, my shoulders tend to wing a little bit as well but that's partly because my thoracic my upper back is is flat yeah, it's a bit rough on the floor that's why I keep having to wipe my bum with my hands so here you'll see same side from the side on view so possibilities are stretch the leg out tap the toe Boof. then the same arm lengthen and then I give the lift a try Oy, there we go not bad if I say so myself and um, my system is kicking in it's like oh where am I where am I where am I come on hold this hold this timing it just now that weight vest is a couple of inches off the floor that's why it's like oh, how do I get my knee down there tap down to give yourself some support you could do this with the opposites as well it doesn't have to just be on the same um, and create length throw from butt to head so that's the top of your body you can think of length or the bottom um, which would be pubic bone for boobs shoulders are often an issue and wrists which is why here we go I suddenly went oh I should have gone through this first oh. so here I come I'm just going to explain the arm spiral oh sweaty it's warm it's lovely I love I do love the heat okay I realize my boobs are showing so please excuse me one moment while I get rid of them okay arms good so what tends to happen I mean my you'll see my tattooed arm really can hyperextend more than my right side so I have to work super hard at not letting that arm happen because it creates a, a an unstable joint hand there middle finger forward spread your fingers and your wrist creases are straight and here you can go internal external rotation of your upper arm if you do a very small upper arm outward that's my arm is shown there then I'm going to spiral watch my tattoo go Whee! inwards which puts a little bit more pressure on the thumb there's an unstable joint yeah, if it's bent slightly, it will pop out. If it's extended, it will come the other way. Whereas when I get it locked in place, wherever you tap me from, I'm pretty secure there. So that's what you want to get, because when you can get that spiral, it releases the pressure off your wrists, your shoulder girdle will set better. Um, and then when you take it into your higher end moves of planks and so on, it helps. Almost lost my camera. I love having that tattoo, I have to say, because it really helps see the spiral. So here on my spiral again, shoulders, wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Okay, feet could be flat or tucked. I um, wasn't sure which I wanted to do because of the surface I was on there. Belly lifted, long body. Rock to you, find the balance. Lift the belly up. And then the arm spiral kicks in. Because then when, check it out, I get my spiral and I get my lift. When I go to plank, I don't drop and sag into my plank. And that's what I'm after. So whenever I'm training someone, these are the sort of things that I'm, I aim to teach you because then when you come into movements like this, <laughs> I set strong. I hope you enjoyed that today and it's been helpful and see you again soon. Bye.